and welcome to another edition of Frightfully Forgotten's Trash or Treasure. But before we get started, what are we drinking? Uh, the Dark Crystal Munich Dunkel. Today we're going to bring to you a Trash or Treasure episode, Halloween 5 from 1989. In spirit of Halloween season and our season 5. That's right. It's a movie that me and Adam, and I'm sure a lot of uh, lovers of the franchise, been on the fence about it. We, we're still on the fence about it, right? Yeah. I mean, every time we watch it, I like that, but I hate that. My opinion seems to change every time I watch it. So we're going to try and address some of the problems with it, and also some of the good things about it. The trash and the treasure. Exactly. And hopefully come to a consensus. <laughs> Halloween 5 is co-written and directed by French director Dominique Othenin Girard, reprising his role for the fourth time, Donald Pleasance as Dr. Loomis, mm -hmm. Danielle Harris comes back to reprise her role as Jamie from part four. It starts at the end of Halloween 4 and it just shows, it recaps everything, right? Die, you son of a bitch! The movie picks up when he falls through the mine shaft throw a stick of dynamite in to blow him up. Then he gets into like this river and he's all floating down river and everything and swimming. And <laughs> <laughs> Comes on shore and he meets this hermit and he just collapses one year later. Jamie, and she's now in a children's clinic. All of the events from the fourth movie have traumatized her so much that she can't really talk. She seems to have this psychic link with Michael. And we learn this pretty much right away by Michael starting to wake up in that hermit guy's lair. <laughs> that parrot? Yeah, that... <laughs> Some, like, retired pirate yeah. or something, I guess? <laughs> wrist starts to turn around and you see this symbol carved into his wrist. Grabs his mask and he puts it on and as he's doing that, we see Jamie mimicking chops the shit out of his back. <laughs> I guess that's all the thanks you get yeah. <laughs> for looking after him for a whole year. And Loomis knows that something's up. Now that Michael is awake, he's decided to take his revenge. He goes after Rachel, who is Jamie's stepsister. Also kicked his ass in the fourth <laughs> one. So Rachel is at home getting ready, listening to the 80s music. The dog Max goes missing and gets a call from Loomis. Get out of the house! <laughs> <laughs> Get out of there now! Because Jamie had this kind of premonition. So she runs out and the cops come. They go through the house. It's all fine. No one's there. And you see Max run up the sidewalk. Yeah. Oh, he's fine. He just got away. Rachel goes back in the house. And what do you know it? Michael Myers is there waiting for her. Stabs her to death in the daylight. Then we see this kind of mysterious man up here he comes off this bus and you see these boots these kick-ass fucking boots <laughs> pretty cool and he's got that same kind of tattoo on him that michael has dr loomis he's prepared this time he's gonna use jamie and her psychic link to michael to his advantage try to trap michael and finally get rid of him and that's where we're gonna end the plot if you haven't seen the movie well finish watching the movie to find out what happens but until then is a trash or treasure. That's right. And that brings us to the trash. One of the biggest points of contention with this movie, and I think everybody will agree, either one way or another, whether you <laughs> like it or not, is this man in black and this sort of brotherhood of thorn and all yeah. this kind of shit that they start to introduce with Michael's character. The guy shows up on a Greyhound, what the Brotherhood of Thorn couldn't afford to rent a car for him? What the fuck? First of all, <laughs> they don't build on it enough in this movie for it to make any sense. To have this guy show up, walk around, and then bust Michael out of jail at the end, and that's it, like, where's the rest of the explanation? And then poor part six has to go and try to clean it up. Build right? on that and they just made a bigger mess. There's also a lot of things in this movie on top of that stupid man in black that also don't make a lot of sense. Like this hermit that's taking care of him <laughs> for like a year? The hermit in Haddonfield? <laughs> this nice <laughs> suburban small 
little town, they got, they got their hermit? I guess every town has its I hermit. I guess so. It's, does he feed him? How much does it cost to feed Michael? It's yeah. probably a lot. He's a big guy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Big guy. On top of the hermit <laughs> nonsense, there's a lot of kills that actually don't really make a lot of sense because they don't really move the plot forward. Yeah, Rachel makes sense. Why he wants to kill Rachel. But after Rachel is killed, just go after Jamie. Exactly. Like, there's that shot of him, like, outside the children's hospital. Well, go and get her. Yeah, exactly. Like, then he just goes and kills all these other people instead of going after Jamie. Why certain people are being killed kind of needs to make sense. It makes the movie jump to a lot of different locations that don't really make sense either. This movie doesn't really have a place that feels like home, that you're grounded, that this is kind of like where the movie takes place. It's all over the place. Yeah. Children's Hospital, the barnyard, the yeah, that Rachel's house. That party, yeah. the field. Yeah. That, uh, then the that, Myers house. Yeah, and the, and the play too yeah. with Jamie. And oh, the, yeah. they're at that play. Like, Jesus, pick something here yeah, you know, yeah, and yeah. go with it. <laughs> Rachel being killed so early, wasting this actress's talent and this character. In some ways, yeah, I feel that way, but in another way, it's like, okay. You can see why. You can see why. They already had their showdown in the fourth one, so you can't have that again right. in the fifth one, right? It's got to be something different. Yeah, it'd be too much of the same. Another trash aspect of this movie is the cops. Well, along with that stupid music. The goofy right? cops. Drink, drink, burn, drink, drink, honk, honk, those horns Yeah, and like stuff. it takes like, you right out of the whole horror aspect of the movie. Yeah. If you are going to have them stupid and bumbling, have it more subtle. Yeah. And not with the stupid clown music. Yeah. Another trash <laughs> aspect of this movie is, again, like part four, they fool you with the damn movie cover. It's not the mask from the first one. It's not the mask from the fourth one, yeah. which it should be. The stupid big flap thing up yeah, here. Yeah, that like, thing. I don't like that. Like, tuck that shit in, buddy. Like, get that in there or yeah. something. I think it's gonna, like, catch the wind yeah. and start fluttering. <laughs> <laughs> And then I hate how you can actually see the black fabric covering the eyes. The first movie, you got the dark eyes because they lit it a certain way where you don't see the eyes, exactly, right? Yeah. As opposed to putting this black fabric like front and center, like it's blatantly obvious. They actually took a mold of like the actor's face and used that. If you're gonna choose a different mask than part four, at least try to get closer to the original and not further yeah. away. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> the treasure, and one really cool part about this movie is the other mask Michael Myers wears, which we mentioned the last year. Top 10 horror movie mask, grumpy old man mask in the car. Yeah, that is. It's all angry and tightening on the steering wheel. Like, and that's a really creepy scene when she kisses him on the cheek and just the way that he looks at her, you can see his eye. It's like the mask portrays his rage inside, Loomis. All the other movies, he's been chasing Michael. He actually has a plan to get in front of Michael this time, yeah. to cut him off. Character arc there too, because he's no longer got that kind of compassionate side to him that he did in the previous yeah. movies. At this point, he's so defeated and he just needs to get this evil off the Earth, by any means, he's gonna use this poor girl, Jamie, as a pawn to get to Michael. You see that change in Loomis where he's now callous. Come get her, Michael! Come get the little girl! <laughs> And then at the end with the actual showdown, he's beating Michael with that big two by four. Like it's pretty intense, yes. you know? Die! Die! Die. <laughs> <laughs> and they're looking at each other like, yeah. that's... That's, you know? a, that's a great moment, actually. When you did our top 10 Dr. Loomis moments, we were surprised how many actually came out of part five. Mm -hmm. He's such a badass. He <laughs> doesn't take no shit. And he's just gonna get Michael by hook or crook. A lot of the kills are really good. There's daytime kills. He's not just gonna come get you at night. One of my other favorite kills too is the cop when he hangs him with that rope ladder, throws him oh, yeah. out the window. Beats the shit out of him beforehand, First, dude. Yeah. Just manhandles yeah. him. <laughs> like, yeah. Two, two good kills in the barn. Yeah, with that pitchfork yeah. right through that guy. And then that girl. With the big sickle. <laughs> That, it's a yep. cool shot. The whole lead up to when Tina is killed is great because they have that big chase 
through the field with the car. Yeah. Where he's chasing Jamie and Billy, and then he's about to kill Jamie, and Tina comes last minute, sacrifices herself for Jamie. The kill itself isn't great, but everything kind of leading up to it yeah. and what's all behind it is what makes yeah. it work. The idea, right? Yeah. The directing is actually really, really good in this movie. A lot of the shots are done really well. All of the lighting, everything to do with the lighting in this movie, fantastic. For the first time today ever, I watched the movie with the commentary, the director <laughs> commentary. And the director does talk a lot about lighting. So you yeah. can tell it was, you know, it's something that he concentrated on. Right. And a neat thing is in the Myers house, he said there wasn't any piece of internal lighting projected through a window or through a crack in the boards or something. There was no lights physically in the house. It all came from windows and outside right. and stuff, which is really neat. Yeah, it's cool. And they even show Loomis trying to turn the lights switch yeah. on, right? It doesn't yeah. work. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, it's a great looking movie for sure. You can't deny Danielle Harris's acting in this for being, I forget how old she was, 10, 11 or something. Yeah. Man, she kill it. The director talks about it too in the commentary, like, and he would watch her like prepare for scenes and she'd do things like little things like hold her breath so she'd be out of breath it's not even stuff you tell her to do. She just do it on her own. It's crazy to think that she didn't get better work after this yeah. movie. That she kind of just kind of stuck with the horror genre. All it takes is a bad child actor to wreck a movie, right? That doesn't happen in this movie no, at all. No, no. It could easily have happened. Yeah. Even Donald Pleasance's performance is like... He's just giving it his all yeah. in this. He wasn't going to do anything past part five. So you can kind of tell, okay, this will be my <laughs> my grand exit from the franchise. I'm going to give it all. He does at the exactly, end. Exactly, you know? yeah. It's no wonder he needed that bourbon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> drinking on set. <laughs> Down to the wire here. Trash or treasure? It's treasure. It's, yeah, it's treasure. I, I think I'll have to say treasure too. And my opinion on that seems to change year to year. Every time I <laughs> yeah. watch the movie, it's like, ah, that's a shit. Or, oh, that's really good. Yeah. But I don't know, when you break it down the way we just did, if this was any other slasher, if it wasn't part of a Halloween franchise and didn't have Michael Myers attached to it, it's a great movie. It looks good. The acting's yeah. good. You can keep going the same direction, but it may get old. And you try something new now. Yeah, and then so it starts to piss people you off. You get lambasted for it. Exactly. Yeah. So it's kind of... You can see where they were, what they were trying to do, and what they were sort of up against. Yeah. Psychic Link, I can deal with. You know, I can get past the Psychic Link. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the man in black and that bullshit with the tattoo. They didn't need it at all because no. it doesn't go, really go anywhere in this movie. No. So they didn't need it. Anyways, I'm sure all of you have your own opinion on Halloween 5, whether it's trash or treasure or somewhere in the middle. If you had to choose one, it would be treasure. That's right. Would we watch it again? Yes. yes. That's kind of what it boils down to. Yeah. And I've seen this movie many, many times. It's still enjoyable. And you sometimes get something a little bit more out of it. Until next time, keep drinking. Charlie! Keep drinking, Charlie! Charlie.